Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. We are recreating the animated lights in KDA's villain. In the last tutorial, we created the spotlights, we added the fog, we added some noise to the fog. In this video tutorial, we are going to finish up our lights, make it look high quality, and then also render it. So we're gonna be going over rendering animations. We have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's play a little bit with those sharp edges. I'm going to show you this particular light right here. I'm going to add what's called a filter. So if you scroll down, you can add a filter and I'm going to be using what's called a light decay. I'm going to add it and then it adds this icon here. So go ahead and open that up and you can use what's called near attenuation or far attenuation. So far attenuation means how far does the light go? Um, and the near attenuation means where does it start? So I'm going to use near and by increasing this and I'll demonstrate you can see that from that point to 23 units the light starts to appear so I can use this to make sure that that edge at the beginning is not so sharp I still want that spotlight I still want it but I don't want it to be really obvious that it starts right there so this kind of helps with that intensity. So I'm going to have to do that for all of them. So give me a second while I go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just go down the list. I just did seven. Okay, let's start with this one. Add filter, light decay, open this up, change it to three. Next, add filter. This is if I could script, this would be a lot faster. Um, but I, only, I don't have that many lights. Light decay. This is why if you have an engineer friend, this would be like, can you create a tool for me, please? Light decay, because um, engineers are awesome. They create tools for you. Or actually you can learn how to do it yourself. I have a, a video tutorial on how to create like really simple scripts. So good help, light decay. I gotta focus, three. Add light decay, double click, change this to three. I believe I did that one already. Same thing with this one. Light decay, double click, three. Add filter, light decay, three. And this one doesn't have any fog, so I don't have to worry about it. So let's see the results. Take a snapshot before and after. So it definitely looks a little bit more natural. All right, now lucky for me with the fog, I can always go back into my atmosphere fog, click on this little connection, go over here to my AI noise and maybe just change this to 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Just, I just wanna make it a little bit chunkier. All right, let's see what that looks like. So you can compare the difference. So now it's looking a little bit more chunkier, which I like. Let's save, file, save as. All right, so that's the beginning. Let's go to the end of the animation. Make sure that that's looking okay. All right, it's looking good. Now I feel like the background light's still too strong, so I'm gonna go really low, maybe 0 0.008. Again, I just want a hint of it. I want a hint of light. It's looking pretty neat. Kinda like it. I'm digging it. So now I wanna start animating my lights. All right, so it appears that my recording didn't record the whole scene where I animated all of the lights, so I'm just gonna explain to you how I did it. The animation starts from one through 34, I'm sorry, through 65. And the first thing I did was select the light and click the letter S on your keyboard. And if you take a look at your channel box, you'll see that it the spotlight gets keyframes. Then I moved all the way to the last frame and I press W, which is move, and I translate it to the left in this case. Some of them I moved to the right, others I moved to the left, and then I clicked S. And then I went about the halfway point and I just moved the light down, S. So the result is that it goes down and then it goes back up. You can add a little bit of rotation. I didn't want to add rotation because I thought maybe that would cause a little bit too much movement, so I just left them translated, but that was the idea behind the animation. All right, now that I've animated the lights, let's go ahead and give this a test render because I need to see if the animated lights make sense for the scene. Now, I'm not gonna render the whole thing in high quality. This is just a test render. So let me show you what a test render looks like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that this is gonna go somewhere 
that I can find. So what I did was type in animation lights, which is going to create a folder and another thing. And then the files are going to be called animation lights. So you can see here in the file name, it's going to say animation lights, animation lights, then 0 0.0029, you know, so on and so forth. Um, it's up to you if you want to use TIFF or a JPEG or whatever, but uh, if since this is a test animation, I probably would encourage you to just do a JPEG and the quality can be at 50% because you don't need a super high quality. Um, you just want to test to see if the animation looks good, if there's any missing parts, like an area that needs a light. So, you know, I can kind of test it out here, but I really need to see visuals. Okay, so now JPEG 50%. Don't forget to go to name number extension. The frame padding is at default four. If you want to do less, you can. I mean, we only animate 65 frames or so. So if you want to, you can even drop it to two, but three is fine. Don't forget to change the value. So this would be six, uh, zero to, in this case, 62. And don't forget to choose your camera. That's also really important. Yeah, I created a camera to render with. So I'm going to be choosing that. If you see perspective, make sure you change that to camera. And this is very important. You want, this is the area where you want to reduce the quality. So when you guys are ready to create a nice large render, you might want to go to HD 1080 or HD 720. The preview that it comes with is 540, but I really want to make it even smaller because again, I'm just trying to test things out. So if you want to, you can change your width to 540 and don't forget to make sure maintained width height ratio is on and it will render a small version of this. So let me demonstrate to you what that looks like. Like I said, tiny, but the point is, is that you can in fact see the animation and it renders really fast. So in this case, let me move this. Um, it took about five seconds. So if I'm going to, you know, five seconds isn't too bad. So when I render this out, the render will go fast. All right. So now that I have this, um, take a look at your Arnold settings. Yeah. Just again, I've changed this before, but the average quality is three, two, 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 twos, but I have diffuse. I have specular. I don't have any glass. So let me change that to zero and I don't have subsurface. So let me change that to zero. Now I do have volume. So make sure that goes up, but I'm going to go ahead and change it back to two. So everything's at two and I just turn off the things that don't need to be calculated. All right. You're ready to render. Let's go to rendering. Render, render sequence, and I will be right back with the final results. There it is. Let's go ahead and it's in my images folders. You can, it's a little dark on the left side. I might have to fix that. And I'm just hitting my arrow key. So things are moving. She's walking. It's a little dark. I'm going to have to create a rim light for her just to make sure. And then she walks into the light, just like Kata. So the good news is, is that it's looking good at the end. The bad news is, is that uh, this side's looking a little empty. So not a problem. That's the reason why we preview this. I'm going to click on these two again. Uh, this is going to be my camera. This is my perspective. And what I can do is just grab one of these lights and just duplicate it. Duplicate. Now it does lose the keyframe, so, you know, keep that in mind. And I want to make sure that it ends around... Well, actually, I need to make sure that it starts around here. So I'm going to make sure it looks a little bit of a different angle. Hit S. And I'm also going to pre whoop, preview it. You can hit 1-1, one, one, but I think, there we go. So let's play. OK, I'm glad it's there. So that's a good place. And then. I can make this one, move it to the side here, hit S, and then of course I'm going to just nudge it down a little bit. So that should illuminate that area fairly well, and then as it gets to the end it shouldn't interfere with anything else. Okay, so now that I have this uh, ready to go, I wanted to add a rim light. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a area light, an Arnold area light, and I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to make sure it's a little bit on her on the side here. Now let me focus here. And you can see that that little line sticking out of it. You want to make sure that it's facing her. Now the problem with this beautiful area light, and I'm going to make it long, is that it's going to pick up fog, right? So if I go, oh, and I'm going to turn off normalize. Normalize just means that even if I scale it, it doesn't lose its intensity. 
so you'll notice that the light is picking up the fog. So I'm not, don't want that. Just go ahead and go down to visibility of the light and just turn off the volume because the only thing I want is to impact her. Now the issue, and let me rewind to frame one. The issue also is, and let me get it to her side just so I can see a little bit of that rim lighting, is that it's also illuminating the floor. And I really don't want that effect. So we're gonna go to Windows Relationship Editor, Light Linking, Light Centric. And these are all my lights and I'm gonna choose the area light and I'm gonna tell it not to select the floor. I do want it to affect calico and I want it to affect everything else, but I don't want it to affect the floor. Uh, now she's being illuminated. It's no longer impacting the floor, which is great. It's a little too much on her side, so I'm gonna push it back a little bit. And I'm going to change the color because we have a blue theme going around here, but I'm gonna lighten it up and I'm going to increase the intensity. So I'm in frame zero, I just wanna make sure it looks good. So she's appearing fairly well, I kinda of like it. Just wanna make sure we can actually see a little bit of her shape. Maybe nudge it over a little more, make it a little slightly bigger. Let's go to 60. And it's gonna to start to disappear. So I may wanna animate this light. So I like where it is here, I'm gonna hit S. And then as she gets further away, I'm going to make sure that it kind of follows her. That looks good. Let's go to frame one, make sure that looks okay. Let's go to frame 32, make sure that looks okay. Yeah, I kind of love, I like that a lot. All right, cool. All right, so we're set. Go to your render settings. Okay, so now we have to go back into increasing our size. So I'm gonna go 960 by 402, which was the original values. This time I am going to choose something higher quality, which is going to be a TIFF is fine, whichever you like. I don't like any compression, so compression is going to be none. 1 through 62 is fine. All of this is looking fine. Just double check to make sure everything looks good. I'm going to do a higher quality render, so I'm going to increase this to 4 and then change everything to 3, 3. Again, there's no transmission. There's no subsurface. I definitely have volume, so go ahead and increase that, increase that to 3. I do have a adaptive sampling, so I'm gonna turn that on. Um, I'm gonna maybe change this to maybe a six so that any any area that might needs more render time, it will just go ahead and choose this value. Notice that I'm not cranking up all my values, so I have a video tutorial about how to use your render settings, so I'll post it up in the video. Just don't crank up all your values because your render times are gonna increase. If there's no difference, why increase your render times? So take a look at that video if you're kinda of confused about this process. And the other thing you need to do is the actual lights themselves. Now I have a few. And if you want to, you can turn this little guy on, which is the light editor. So it's right here next to the render layers. Click that on. And this is where you can see the main parts of the lights. So color, intensity, exposure. And I'm going to go in and change the samples of all of these lights. And if you select all the lights and change the samples to three, you'll notice that all the samples change to three, which is good because I really need high quality samples for my lights. So all my samples are set to three. I probably wouldn't go any higher than that. If you want to, you can see what type of results are gonna get. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one. When I do a render sequence, it renders through this button. Gonna click on one, one, there you go. It's really not that big, my render, but I think it looks nice. I think this will work. And it took about, let's see, where's the time? 12 seconds. So um, you're more than welcome to make this bigger, which I think I am. So let's go back into my comment tab and I'm going to change this to a higher value. Let's do um, 1024. Don't forget to hit 1-1. One, one. All right, so that's what it looks like so far. And this is basically ready to go. So what I'm going to do is pause this video. I'm going to let it render. And here we are. Here's all of our TIFF images. They're about one megabyte each. I have all the frames. Let's go to media encoder. I'm going to click on this little plus sign. Go to the path, select the first one, 001. This is going to be a TIFF image sequence. It's gonna make it into a video file. Open Sesame. You can see that it's gonna it's gonna convert it into a film. Um, I'm gonna make it into a high bit rate just because I want a high quality render. Click on this to make sure it's gonna be placed somewhere that you can find it. Um, animation lights, Kata, and hit play. Watch the magic happen below. Cool, you can click on this. 
which will take you to the path. And there is the movie. Double click, press play, and there we go. Ooh, I wish I had waited. I wish I uh, held it right here. So maybe in After Effects, I might actually hold it. But there you go. She actually walks into the scene. And there you go. We get animated lights. We have fog. We have all sorts of stuff. There's a little flicker right there, which means I probably just have to re-render that one frame. Oh, yeah, that's weird. But otherwise, I hope you found that video tutorial helpful. Um, you get to learn how to create animated lights, fog, light decay, all sorts of stuff. Inspired by Kida as a villain, one of the scenes. So hopefully you can see that uh, relatively easily you can create some really nice effects. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. You can also tell me by... Tell me if you liked it by clicking on the little like button and of course subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell so you don't miss any of my video tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to explore a little bit of Maya's lighting and how much fun it is. I mean, it's a very powerful software so you can create some really cool stuff. Let me know what you think and I will see you next time.